If you ever mention the name Shiro Emi in my house, then I'm kicking you out. Why? Because in this household we call him She Goat Emiya. Why? Because he's simply the goat. My man is literally the best protagonist in all of fiction. Walter White, Aaron Yeager, Lelouch, Usho Mia Battler, Fodder, all of them. None can withstand the sheer chadness of Emiya. So for this Shiro Day special, I'll explain what specifically about Shiro makes him a goat. First, let's start off with the fact y'all may not even know about. Man's got no plot armor. The anime only watchers are here sitting there like... Stop the cow! <laughs> But hold on, let me elaborate. See, it might seem weird how an ordinary high school boy can be put up against immensely powerful heroic spirits and still come out unscathed every time. But here's the thing, he doesn't. You see, in the original game, my man, depending on the choices you make, dies a lot. Like a lot. And many of these deaths aren't just quick ones either. For example, in the very first possible death for Shiro, Ilya comes in, uses Berserker to tear him into tiny little pieces, proceeds to curse him so he can't ever lose consciousness unless his head is destroyed, and then proceeds to preserve his head on her way home so she can torture him indefinitely. Then, in one of Heaven Feels' his bad ends, Shiro is left defenseless as Zoken unleashes hundreds of worms onto him, which take thousands of small bites out of his flesh from both the outside and the inside. Basically like this scene from ReZero. <laughs> As a more cheerful bad end to end off these examples, in the very last bad end of the story, Shiro has to battle one of the strongest servants in the game by himself. Who's the most base thing? You're probably thinking he lost, right? Wrong. This mad lad not only holds his ground, he gets his brain literally fried fighting them, but still wins. But of course, it's a bad ending nonetheless. So now you've been informed of these bad ends, but so what? Well, these bad ends help to show that Shiro isn't miraculously making it out unscathed through thick plot armor. There are multiple timelets where Shiro definitely gets killed, we just happen to see the one where he doesn't. Such bad ends help humanize Shiro because he doesn't seem like that much of a fictional character when he has strict limits on his capabilities just like the rest of us. Alright, so this video up till now was for those who heard little about Shiro and were just interested in the controversy around him. This next section's purpose is to convince anime only why Shiro is better than they thought, so that means it'll be riddled with spoilers. So if you haven't seen Fate yet and actually plan to, then please stop watching and read the visual novel NOW! Alright, to start off this next section, one key thing you gotta love about Shiro is that his backstory is so well done that he's a complex character before my man even gets development. Basically, Shiro was in this funky fire because of events in Fate Zero, right? Well, as you would expect, being in that fire was very traumatizing because all around him, he saw such pointless death that he could do nothing to stop while he was the only one to actually survive the ordeal. Seeing such a tragedy he was helpless to change increased his survivor's guilt so much that he was resolved to make sure nobody around him had to suffer like that again, even if it means giving up his own life. Such a thorough backstory really augments Shiro's character because with any great anime character, it's really clear to the audience how their observable actions in the present are influenced by their personal experiences in the past. In the case of Shiro, his tragic backstory perfectly explains why he's so committed to help others. Next, another great thing about Shiro is that my man doesn't only get one instance of character development. In each route, he basically becomes a character entirely different from the other routes. In the Fate route, while we don't see him develop in the slightest, it's still possible to find a lot to like about him. While there are a lot of anime where the protagonist is essentially a blank slate who doesn't really represent anything, Shiro makes it very clear what he stands for throughout this route, which is great because it not only allows us to form our own opinions on his ideals and therefore connect with Shiro, but it also makes his development in the other routes that much clearer. Another great thing we can take away from Shiro in this route is the impact he and his ideals have on the other characters as well. We see this at its best with Saber. At the start of the Holy Grail War, she looks at her time as the king and thinks, damn, that sucks, feeling such immense guilt that she is basically willing to invalidate her entire life dip, 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 dip. so that maybe then the British kingdom wouldn't have collapsed into chaos. Like, goddamn! But then we see beating Shiro basically saves her from this fate because by being with him, she is able to realize that she can't just live only for others, and that she has to move on and say, It is what it is! It is what it is! about the past. So yeah, while Shiro in this route doesn't get any development, 
It serves as a fantastic introduction to his character and makes him more likable by allowing us to see how he positively affects those around him. Also, while it may be the worst route, this ending got me like... <laughs> Moving on to Unlimited Blade Works, now we start to think, yo, she was actually a goaded character? That's because this is the first route where we actually see him go through distinguishable character development. You see, the entire route is about Shiro's goofy ideals being challenged by Archer, aka him in the future, who basically tells them, You should kill yourself now! What I like to focus on in particular is when they finally clash. So let me give you the Spark Notes version of it. This fight is really the first time in the whole game where Shiro ever has to question his ideals. Well honestly, those ideals aren't even just questioned, they are literally stomped on. Archer brutally shows Shiro that his future will end in him never receiving any thanks and instead having his actions get him executed by the very people he helped. Oh, but at least as a counter guardian, he can still help others, right? Nah. As a counter guardian, he doesn't get to save people, only kill those causing a problem. As Shiro is on the verge of both mental and physical defeat, it is here when he finally realizes why those ideals even matter to him in the first place. They were simply beautiful to him. This may sound like a corny and contrived argument, but if you really think about it, it makes some sense. There's just no way to deny how honorable it is to help others. After this epiphany, Shiro regains his energy and defeats Archer through sheer balls alone. This fight is vital for Shiro's character in a couple ways. First, it does what most good stories do. Challenges the protagonist's ideals and either changes or reinforces them. These types of challenges help us grow better attached to the character by giving us a reason for the character's ideals to change. Of course, changing their ideals is important to do because me, you, and all other humans never stay static with just one life philosophy. We all grow from our experiences. Shiro shows such growth as he realizes, you know, maybe Archer's got kind of a point, because being too selfless will in fact lead his life to hell. This causes him to still keep his ideals, but tweak them to account for their flaws. Another importance such challenges have is that they allow us to learn more about the character than any other event in the story. And as we learn more about the character, we relate to and like them more. Applying this to Shiro, we are able to finally learn his rationale for sticking to such ideals. We also see just how core these ideals are to his identity, shown by how he's able to pick himself up with relative ease after Archer's smackdown. Enough about just challenges though. This fight is also great for Shiro in a similar manner to the first route. We once again see Shiro positively impact those around him. Archer had been a disillusioned broken man over the course of the route, but beating Shiro gave him salvation. Seeing the strong belief Shiro placed in his ideals made Archer himself realize that even if his ideals led him to a hellish life, Shiro was right. Well, with UBW, we got to see Shiro actually change as a character, and normally this would be the end of his story, right? Well, then the next route pops into the room and says, <laughs> See, throughout the entire series, or even just through this video, you may have noticed a teensy weensy something. Shiro's ideals ain't healthy. Sure, you can definitely identify some beauty in them, but would you really say that sacrificing everyone and everything around you is the right call? Because that is what Shiro truly believes in. So, this route has to come to tell Shiro to SNAP BACK TO REALITY The primary way Heaven's Field does this is by making you and Shiro care for the duratagonist of this route, aka Sakura. Then, the game rips your heart out by revealing that not only is she abused in ways that would violate felony laws on the daily, but oh yeah, she's gonna die soon and you have to entrust her life in this guy's hands. And to top it all off, her illness is causing her to become a weird shadow thing that consumes anyone she comes across in the night or something. But there is the easy way to stop Sakura. Just kill her. This forces Shiro into a dilemma. He can either uphold his ideals by killing who he loves to save hundreds, or he can say screw it and use his ideals into the garbage. This is probably the most important scene for Shiro's character. He is forced to make such a difficult choice and he actually chooses a more human option. He is willing to condemn hundreds of people to death and completely abandon everything that gave his past life meaning just so he can save the girl he loves. If that ain't the definition of Black Air Force energy, then I don't know what is. Of course, Shiro's development after this isn't over. Afterward, he's got to learn to take responsibility for the ramifications of his choice. We see this with how he always displays a sense of urgency in stopping Sakura's shadow because he doesn't want even more people to get killed. This helps make Shiro's choice seem more realistic as it demonstrates that he hasn't just suddenly abandoned his idea of saving others, 
he just decided to prioritize Sakura over them. Next, Shuyo's faith in this choice is highlighted by how he puts himself through the ringer to protect Sakura, including but not limited to losing his arm, later losing his whole body, having his mind slowly deteriorate, losing Ilya, and realizing that the blood of hundreds of people are on his hands. However, all of these contribute to Shiro's character because after we see him go through such twisted situations, he just pushes onward, showing just how deep his conviction is to saving Sakura. In summary, while UBW has Shiro modify his ideals but keep most of it intact, this route has him completely abandon them in a very human manner. This section of the video may be quite lengthy, but I really had to go into this much detail to just show you how developed he is. From this video, you've seen how he faces entirely different challenges to his ideals, reacts in completely different ways, and has wildly varied relationships with the rest of the cast in between each route. There are so many layers, layers that if by the end of this section you somehow don't think she was a complex character, I don't know what to tell you. Alright, next, I need to talk about probably the most important aspect of Shiro. Just like all great protagonists, Shiro is central to the story's message. You see, I believe the lesson Nasu was trying to convey with the story by using all three routes is this. While pursuing idealistic goals such as being a hero can definitely be noble and beautiful, you have to make sure in pursuing those goals, you never compromise the lives of your loved ones or yourself. So how does Shiro play into this idea? Well, it's because of him that we even know the message of each route. In UBW, his development and realizing his ideals are still worth pursuing after his fight with Archer reinforces the story's overall message that ideals can be flawed yet beautiful enough to keep in mind. In Heaven's Feel, the way Shiro gives up everything for Sakura reinforces another message of the story, stating that you should never sacrifice the ones you love just to pursue your ideals. And with this, we now covered every story detail explaining Shiro's greatness. Although, need I mention that his theme slaps? In fact, it slapped so hard that they didn't just stop with making one theme for him, my man's got 19 unique official tracks for himself. And that's not even counting unofficial ones like the Crow's Claws yo, version. Yo. The final reason for why Shu is the GOAT is because he doesn't just count as a single character, Man Man is literally two characters. Right now you're thinking, what do, what do you mean, mean by that? that? Simple, Shiro Emiya isn't only the name of the best protagonist in all fiction, he's also the name of another character known as Garcher, who's also one of the best characters in all of fiction. In summary, anime only are missing out on the glory of Shiro. He's one of the most brilliant protagonist- actually no, one of the most brilliant characters in all of anime. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this video and learned something about Shiro and Merry Shiro Day to you all.